fans and welcome back once again to the Midwest number one wrestling television show. It's Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. I'm your host, Capital City Kyle, and we are live from the main event. And tonight we got a big matchup. It's Playboy Pete Huge. Pete, yeah, I don't know if you've heard this, but MIW Commissioner Terry Fox has announced that you are going to be taking on well-known Horace the Psychopath tonight. What? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. Well, wait a minute. No, no, wait. I'm wrestling Robbie Thunder tonight for the cruiserweight strap. I'm finally getting my chance. I'm taking the gold. What are you talking about? Terry Fox decided earlier today that you are going to be in there with the veteran, with the well-known name Horace the Psychopath, a chance to make a big name for yourself. No, 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 this, no, I, I am not wrestling that maniac. Look at me. I'm beautiful. The ladies love me. I need gold. I'm not wrestling. Horace. You know, Johnny, we told the people that we had a surprise. We told the people that we'd take the straps off of Hoofer and K-Train. What did we do? We took the straps off of Hoofer and k -Train. It didn't matter if Bachwinkle was there or not, even though Bachwinkle will get his someday. <laughs> but looks like Hoofer and K-Train want another shot. They want another shot, brother. What do you think about another shot for Hoofer and K-Train? Another shot for Hoofer and K-Train. Do they deserve it? Bring them on. You know Hoofer and K-Train? For the titles, in a cage, with chairs, in a junkyard. Yeah. It does not matter to us. You want to get your butts whooped one more time? <laughs> Bring it in the ring. And we'll gladly do it. Let's go party. And they stay in with us. What a start to the action here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. It's main event time at the main event. I'm Capital City Kyle, joined by Tim Larson. And look at that. The challengers with a big suplex. And look, here comes K-Train. Oh, and Johnny Parks goes hard way to the outside. Big Daddy Hoofer with a drop kick. There's bodies flying everywhere. Unbelievable. This is a brass knuckles on a pole match. And Big Daddy Hoofer and K-Train now standing tall in the center of the ring. As the Lost Souls, J.B. Trask and Johnny Parks there on the outside try and regroup and figure out some kind of game plan. I don't think that's what they were expecting. K-Train and Hoofer letting them take their time on the outside. And now this is, of course, K-Train and Big Daddy Hoofer lost the belts here to the Lost Souls at the last time we were here at the main event, Tim Larson, that last month in a kind of a controversial decision. A very, very exciting match. And yes, it was controversial. These guys, um, Johnny Parks, J.B. Trask, used brass knuckles. That's, a, that's the stipulation tonight. You're right. Brass knuckles on a pole because of that brass knuckle interference and cheating to win the titles. Many of you saw that match here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars, and I know I've been waiting all month for this rematch, Tim. Well, the last one could have been the tag team match of the year here in MIW, and this one has all the makings of something very special. Now Hofer behind, get, had the hammer lock, goes for the headlock instead, and takes Johnny Parks over. Oh, gets right back into the headlock, though. Tim, of course, K, there's the tag to K-Train, who the crowd loves here at the main event. Big right hand by the K-Train. K-Train and Hoofer, are a relevant, a relevantly new team. Re pretty recent here. Lost Souls, not that much more experienced, though they've been together probably the better half of this year now, ever since Johnny Parks returned from Australia. I'll tell you what, J.B. Trask and, and uh, Johnny Parks click as a tag team. But so do Big Daddy Daddy Hoofer. Oh! I've never seen that move. K-Train celebrating a bit too long there and allows Johnny Parks to ride him over. There's the, the tag to J.B. Trask. Tim, I know you've followed J.B. for many years. Oh, huge sit-out powerbomb. J.B. Trask, been around the block in Minnesota. He's wrestled the likes of the Lightning Kid, Jerry Lynn, 
Lanny Lane, Horse of Psychopath, all in big feuds. K-Train looking and signaling all ready to go up for those brass knuckles all the way up there on that pole. K-Train now celebrating. Might want to watch out. Here comes Johnny Parks. Blatant interference on the half on the behalf of Johnny Parks there. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike Stormwolf's gonna have his hands full trying to keep keep uh, tabs on this match. Big tag in, here comes Big Daddy Huffer. Huffer had made a pretty good name for himself in singles action. Cover one, two earlier in this year before deciding to go back into tag team work and finding a partner he clicked with in K-Train. Here we go. Oh, oh, look at that submission move now. Hooking that arm around his leg. I don't even know what we'd call that, Tim. A key lock, maybe a modified figure four uh, arm lock. Yeah, sort of a key lock there, Kyle, almost. Very impressive. Uh, you know, and that's Big Daddy Hoofer has shown quite a display of submission moves here in the last month. I know he's been in the gym working on that over at camp, really trying to become an all-around great wrestler. Well, his ground game's really picked up the last year. And Parks Johnny Parks shot for good measure. Yep, Johnny Parks goes flying too. K Trade now firmly in control, picks it up, body slam. K Trade off the ropes, a little bit of dance, and a leg drop on JB Trask. Trask is in a lot of trouble. Cover one, two. Hooked the leg, but not enough to beat him. Referee Mike Stormwolf all over that. Now here comes a little bit of pinball for J.B. Trask. A right by K-Train. A left by Big Daddy Hofer. And John, or J.B. Trask goes down. In comes Big Daddy Hofer now with the tag. Gets an elbow there to Johnny Parks. I'm sorry, to J.B. Trask. It's hard to tell those two apart. Clothesline there by K Train. Oh, Hoofer looked to be setting up for the super kick there, but JB goes down. Roll up. One, two, three. Oh, I think he could have had him there. Not too sure about the count on that one. And now Hoofer with the reversal. This match, of course, is a little different than your average brass knucks on a pole. Normally, Whoever the team is to get the brass knucks is the winner. Tonight, you have to still win by pinfall. But as I said earlier, those, those tag team championships, not on the line. The Lost Souls came out here right before intermission and said they could have either the, the brass knuckles match on a, on a pole match or a title defense, not both. And the team of K-Train and Big Daddy Hooker picking the brass knuckles on a pole match because this, this they've got heat. They're, they're in a simple, simple regular match was not going to end this one, Tim. And now you see Johnny Parks choking out Big Daddy Hooker. I don't even know if there was a legal take there, to be honest with you. These two known for switching since they do look so much alike. Now Parks all over with the choke there. K-Train's had enough, Kyle. I don't blame him there as Johnny Parks now grabs the legs of Big Daddy Hoofer and ooh. Oh man, a low blow. That could really, that probably, that, that might be the end of the match. He delivers both of his feet to the little Hoofers. Now Johnny Parks, one half of the tag team champions of MIW in control and a big clothesline takes down Big Daddy Hoofer. Wow, the Lost Souls are on their game tonight. This has been quite a matchup, Tim Larson. As these, you know, as we've said, these MIW tag team straps have kind of changed a lot recently. These guys are wrestling a, a lot on the mat. I'm a little surprised. I thought there'd be a lot more going for the brass knuckles there on the pole and trying to hit somebody in the head with that and cause a permanent injury. Both guys, I think the experience of JB Trask, at least for his team, JB's smart enough to know you're going to have to wear down your opponent. Yeah, you kind of saw K-Train, who who's definitely doesn't have the experience of JB Trask, going for it too early in the match, and the Lost Souls just aren't going to take that chance. Delivers Big Daddy Hofer to the mat. What's he doing here now? Whoa! What a leg drop! Crushed him. Boy, I think Hooper's probably got broken ribs right there. Hooper is definitely in trouble. Oh. And there, here comes Johnny Parks now. Ooh, it looks like the decapitation attack. Oh, a leg 
Punjab instead. Oh, oh. Never, I wouldn't even be surprised if they crushed his larynx now. Hopper's done. Game kick. One, two, three. Wow. I think, Tim, I agree. Run. If he had hooked the leg there, I, I think it would have been over. I got to give Hofer a lot of credit. There's a lot of guts that, that he's showing right here. And K-Train is getting fired up on the outside. He wants to get in there. Hofer returns the chop. And another one. Now we've got the battle of chops. I wouldn't want to be in there receiving chops from Big Daddy Hofer. Oh, Parks took another shortcut right to the eyes of Hofer. Bangs him down into the turnbuckle. Bangs him into the foot of J.B. Trask, actually. Oh. DDT. Great teamwork here now we've seen in the last couple minutes from the Lost Souls. And now, there goes J.B. Trask illegally for those brass knucks and K-Train over there to stop him. Look at K-Train there. He delivered the uh, axe handle on the outside. Big Daddy Hoofer now on the inside. Looks like he's going up for those knucks. And he's so tall, he can almost reach him from the second turnbuckle. But there, a great move by J.B. Trask, hooking the leg of Big Daddy Hofer, not letting him give it. And I just can't believe there's been a great match up here now. Johnny Parks whips Hofer across. Hofer ducks. Oh, both guys go for that high cross body at the same time. And now both guys are in trouble. Both arriving on the Madden Pain. And look, and you see over there, oh, K-Trade just sends J.B. Trask's head into the banter. He's telling the crowd to move. Folks, if he says move, you better move. And now, people not listening, not getting out of the way. Then K-Train gets into the chair. K-Train eats some steel the hard way. I think the fans around were rooting for him to hit that one guy. Anyways, now back in the ring. We've got to get control of the here, Kyle. 3D! Oh, what was that? That was the 3D wow. shades of the Dudleys. We know the Lost Souls are fans of the Dudleys. Now what's going on here? J.B. Trask and Johnny Parks taking their time trying to dismantle Big Daddy Hofer, but K-Train getting up. Parks tell him to get the knocks, but here comes K-Train! K-Train with the right. Another right for Johnny Parks. K-Train and Big Daddy Hoffer back in control. K-Train puts his head down, up and over goes Johnny Parks. But J.B. Trask, as you can see, well, you, maybe you can't see, but J.B. Trask is choking out Hoffer. K-Train's got Johnny Parks there in the, with the big body slam. Mike Stormwolf, the referee, trying to get some control here, trying to get Trask and Hooper out of there. K-Train now signaling that he's going up for those knocks. He better watch out, because here comes Johnny Parks again. Tim, I don't think he realizes Johnny Parks is right behind him as he takes his time climbing up there. Dangerous position to be in, Kyle. Very dangerous. He's got his back to Johnny Parks. And Parks with the axe handle now brings K-Train back down to the mat. K-Train almost had his hands on those knuckles. In fact, he probably did. He just couldn't get them on hook there. They are up there securely. Now there goes Johnny Parks up there. And look at the experience of J.B. Chask. He just won't let Hoofer out of that corner to try and stop him. But K-Train is over there. Both men battling on the top turnbuckle there, trying to get to those knucks first. No, oh, Johnny Parks hits K-Train with an elbow. K-Train goes flying. Parks, I think Parks is still going for those knucks, though. He might have turned, yep, he's turned around. K-Train better look out. Oh, oh he's sent on. Right on K-Train's chest. He's done. Hofer trying to get K-Train, wake him back up. Trask cuts off Hoofer again. Stormwolf is still trying to get those guys out of there. Timmy's been trying a couple minutes now. Yeah, splatter, platter. Parks has got the knock. Parks has got the knock. Johnny Parks has the brass knuckles. Big Daddy Hoofer, I don't think, realizes it. No, I think he does. I don't think Hoofer knows that. I don't think Parks knew Hoofer was there. One, two, three. Well, that's it. It's over. What a big win. K-Trade and Big Daddy Hoff 
offer huge victory. Big win, but remember, Tim, the titles do not change hands. This is a non-title matchup. with the stunner. Now Hofer's got Johnny Parks. We might see the splatter platter again. Or we might see something else here, Tim. What's K-Train? Oh, atomic drop out in the knocks by K-Train. What a run around, Kyle. What a great move. What a big victory for K-Train and Big Daddy Hofer. They have the belts in their hands. They did not win the belts, Tim Larson. They deserve title shots, and they deserve them now, Kyle. I agree with you on that one. I, I might have taken the title match, but obviously the bad blood needed to be settled. Okay, no, 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 no. Terry, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Do you want me to get hurt? This is Horace the Psychopath. No, Terry. No, am I really, really, am I really wrestling Horace the Psychopath? Yes, you are, tonight. Why? I'm, what gold? Not Horace the Psychopath, no! <laughs> Playboy Pete. I've been waiting for this moment for the last two years. That young blood of yours. I can taste it. And tonight, When the lights go out! Horace the psychopath. He's gonna take a bite. Playboy Pete Huge. I want tonight to be a reminder of what it's like when the lights go out. I've faced big men before. And I face cruiserweights that could dance circles around me. But I always like a challenge. And when Horace delivers the Horace sent on on you, it'll be all academic. Because <laughs> there'll be a one, and there'll be a two, and there'll be a three. And you'll remember Horace the Psychopath. Sweet dreams, young son! <laughs> Welcome back to Minnesota Wrestling Superstars! This is Capital City, Kyle, and I am joined by Upper Midwest Wrestling Newsletter, Editor Tim Larson. Welcome back, Tim Larson. Hey, thanks, Kyle. I'm excited to be here. Horace the Psychopath, Playboy Pete. Have me all wound up tonight, brother. Only Horace the Psychopath could get Tim Larson back in the booth, and we're set, we're going. The match is already underway, and there goes Pete. Oh, spinning heel kick, and Horace the Psychopath goes down. Looks like he caught him with his rear end there, not so much his leg. Pete oh. up on the top. 
Whoa! Right down to the floor. High cross body by Playboy Pete Huge. And now, how about that horse has got to slip into the ring to escape? Can you imagine that? We don't see horse usually in the ring. He's all over the arena. This is set to be quite an exciting match. Now, Tim Larson, you saw Pete Huge here as we are making the introductions. Oh, and a kick to the stomach. Oh! Almost an enziguri there by Horace the Psychopath. Said Pete propelling right over his own body. Here comes the cover. One, two, oh, and you know that Pete was very unhappy when this matchup was made by MIW Commissioner Terry Fox. Pete looking for gold tonight, thought he was going to have that matchup against Robbie Thunder. Instead, he gets Horace the Psychopath. And that's quite a difference, isn't it, Tim? Absolutely. Horace is a wild, maniacal person. Oh, oh my goodness. What a chop there by Horace the Psychopath. And now, those are definitely close fists, but Mike Thunder, or Mike Stormwolf, our referee, not in any hurry to get in there and break it up. Well, with Horace, Horace is a tough guy to contain. Whoa, and look at that, the way Pete just goes flying across the ring. Whoa, now up, where are they going? DDT by Playboy Pete U. Wow, Pete's pulling out all the stops tonight. But when you wrestle Horace the Psychopath, look out. Him. Baseball slide missed it, goes flying right into the chairs. And now here comes Horace with his own baseball slide. I swear to God, I thought they were going to end up in those poor people's lunch. Caught him with the right foot, right under the chops. Now Playboy beating you, jump over the right. Now they're just trading blows. Trading rights and lefts. Now reversal by Pete. And oh, shoulder first into the iron goes. Horace the psychopath, now Horace in trouble. Great seesaw battle, Kyle. Playboy Pete, huge. Oh, putting the stops to Horace the psychopath now. This has been a great matchup from the beginning since Horace ambushed Pete. Now Pete backs him up in the corner. Listen to those kicks connect, Tim Larson. Look at the intensity. Pete hasn't even taken off his shirt yet. Look at Horace, several minutes into the match, finally he takes off oh. his shirt. Whips him with the shirt even. Horace is down. This isn't a position you see Horace in very often. Absolutely not. Wow. Playboy Pete Huge has been all over Horace since the beginning of this bout. And this isn't even the main event here at the main event. But great action. Kick to the stomach. Swinging DDT there by oh. Playboy Pete Huge. Cover one, two. Wow. I thought Pete could get him with that move. Boy, that was close. There's been a couple times Pete's landed, put uh, Horse the Psychopath right down on his head. The one thing you can say about Horse the Psychopath is he takes a licking and keeps on ticking as, yeah. the, as the old saying goes. I don't know how, mu how much good dropping him on his head really does. You're right there, Tim. Well, he is a psychopath. Just whip. A reversal there by Horace. Oh, what a clothesline. Just about decapitated Playboy Pete. Cover. Cover. One, two. Both of these guys going for quick covers. Both of these men, well, you know, Playboy Pete, anyway, is on quite a roll here at MIW. Beat Loud and Pain last month at the main event looking for some gold. Horse the Psychopath just looking to kick some butt. Horse, well, Horse has been on a roll lately, too, in the, in the wrestling business. He's worked for almost every promotion in Wisconsin and Minnesota and it, it with great success. And tonight, he wanted to take it to Playboy Pete huge. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Pete's up top! Play by Pete goes, messes with the drop kick, and you're right on that one. You know, guys in MIW, they got, you know, three, four matches a, a month. The other promotions here in the Midwest, maybe they run a show once every three or four months. Horace the Psychopath probably wrestles two nights every week, almost every week. Last night he wrestled in Wisconsin, now he's back here, he's in Iowa, he's in North Dakota, he's all around. Whoa, big kick, never saw a horse do that. One, one two. Not enough, the super kick. Still can't keep Pete Huge down. So you're right, Tim. Play, or, or, Horace the Psychopath. And he's got the experience factor. I mean, Great the belly to one, belly. two, wrestling almost 10 years. And he's pulled out a lot of wrestling moves tonight. A lot of times you see Horace as a brawler, and he can also wrestle, and he's proven it here tonight. What's Horace MIW. doing? He's got a chair. The, look at those kids. They don't know what to do. They don't want to get close to Horace the Psychopath. I can't blame him there. What's, he's got the chair in the ring. That's not legal here in MIW. Drop kick. Pete got him from behind. I don't know if the Horace was talking to the crowd there. Cover one, two. Not enough. And now Pete with a couple of punches. I don't think that's having any effect on the head of Horace the Psychopath. Oh, he's pulling, oh. A, he's pulling a book out of Horace the Psychopath's uh, book. That page is, out of it. that's a page out of Horace's own book. Oh, and I don't know, yeah, that's kind of disgusting. I don't know if I want to have my teeth into that guy's melon. 
I don't know that I want to have my teeth in anybody's melon, but <laughs> his probably least of all. Pete now in control of this one with a couple of big right hands there. Oh, and a drop Little, kick. Ooh, high impact right in the corner. Now a cover, one. Oh, not even a one count, I'm sorry. As Horace is able to power out of that one quickly. And Pete, he looks confused. He doesn't know what's going on. He thought he had him there. It's going to take a lot more than that from Pete. Pete looks like he's starting to pout. Yeah, I don't know. He, he doesn't know what it's going to take. Obviously, he hasn't been watching his horse, the Psychopath Films. You can't keep hitting him in the head, Pete. It's not going to have any effect. Big flying shoulder block by Horace, the Psychopath. Now Horace picks him up. Oh, snap suplex. And look at Horace. I haven't seen Horace this fired up in a long time either. A splash. Oh, I thought that was going to be a cover. I thought it was going to be his rolling senton, and that might have been it for Pete. Couple Picks right hands. Pete up. Pete's wobbly. Oh, and a clothesline puts Pete right back on the mat. And now Horace is going back to that chair. Seems to have his mind focused on using that chair. I guess Horace not so concerned about the victory. Just wants to inflict some pain tonight. Well, you know Horace, he, he likes to go all over the arena, all over the place. Chairs are not foreign to Horace. We've seen him with garbage cans. We've seen him in stretcher matches. We've seen him just about do everything. I saw him a couple months ago. We saw him, Tim, you and I, oh, handicapped first that block big match. Move by big O oh, and a forearm. He was heading right to the chair. He took a baseball slide. Very, very aware move by the playboy. But now he's now he's in trouble. Horace picks him up by the hair. Fur, firm hand to hair there. Looks like he's gonna try it again though. Reverse. Oh. oh, Horace's knee definitely got oh I think he got in the little horses there. X Factor! That's gonna be it! One, two, three! Oh Pete my gets god! The win. Pete gets the win! I hate to label that an upset, Tim, but the crowd definitely didn't think Pete stood much of a chance. They are not happy with that one. The winner of this match, Playboy Pete Huge! <laughs> what a win for Playboy Pete Huge over Horace the Psychopath, Tim Larson. Oh, Horace is hurt. Horace is definitely in trouble. Unbelievable. That low blow. Pete, Pete's gonna, oh, come on, Pete. Don't do this. Don't do this. What's oh, 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 and I, he got the chair right in his head as he was falling to the ground. Oh, what a DDT by Horace the Psychopath. Horace, no. Oh, we better watch out. Here comes the rolling set. Oh, he crushed him. Definitely could break some ribs, Tim Larson. He crushed him. Well, I don't think this is over between Pete and Horace the Psychopath. If anything, Pete just made him angry. Horace is in pain. And we've got more great action here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. For Tim Larson, I'm Capital City Kyle. Stay tuned.
Welcome wrestling fans once again to Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. I'm Capital City Kyle. We got an action-packed show for you here today. And we're starting off right now. We got Magnus Maximus. You're making your return to MIW. And tonight you got a big matchup with the Chi-Town Thug. Chi-Town Thug. Maximus is back. And that roller coaster ride you were on for so long is coming to an end tonight at the main event here in Fridley because Ma Magnus Maximus here, Chi Town Thug, has something to prove to everybody that hasn't seen him. I'm bigger, I'm badder, and I'm going to show it tonight. Well, that sounds very exciting. We're going to have that matchup for you here pretty quickly, but we got something else to get to first. So stick around, wrestling fans. Ah, the search is now over. I have found somebody with a better body, who is more tan, and looks better than me. I thought it was impossible, but I did it. Come here, come here. Jabroni, with the camera, follow me. All right, can you keep up? Am I still in the shot? I, make sure I'm in the shot. I don't want that. I'll smack you upside. Ladies and gentlemen, my man, how are you? How you doing? Oh! That's what I like. Ladies and gentlemen, JR, the Punisher. Let me tell you, boy, I don't know who you got going tonight with me. I don't even know. But I tell you what, I'm out of retirement, and I'm back. So look out. <laughs> I'll tell you who we got. It's a ring announcer. The ring announcer. <laughs> Good. I sure in the hell feel like beating the crap out of somebody. I'll tell oh, you. Oh, Travis Sharp. Travis this will be sharp. good. <laughs> oh, wow. He must be a young boy, huh? Oh, yeah. He's All a right. lucky ring announcer. He's a widow ring announcer. Little ring so announcer. So we have to be really careful with well, him. I'll tell you what, folks. It's going to be a beating, so stay <laughs> tuned. <laughs> <laughs> see him demolish Travis Sharp, and all the ladies now are going to see the real man shake his love today for all of you out here. Maestro, let's go ahead. I want to entertain the ladies. Hit my music. interesting matchup we have here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. I'm Capital City Kyle and joining me today is MIW Commissioner Terry Fox. Now Terry, well, this is a return to the main event by JR the Punisher. We haven't seen him in quite a while. It has been. It's been about a year or so since he's uh, showed himself around here. I'll tell you, there's nobody knows JR better than I do, Kyle. I have wrestled that man more than, more than one time. You know who I used to see wrestle JR a lot was that mass jungle fighter you mentioned in the last match. Yeah, uh, he kind of disappeared the same time JR did. Yeah, they did. I think I think the jungle fighter took him out. Well, you know the Pakistani also had a few uh, wars with uh, JR Carson. I kind of wonder where the Pakistani is today and where he stands. I think that was the question I heard most in the back. But now look at the way that uh, JR is taking it to Travis Sharp here. Well, uh, he's, he's using them scientific boots, you know. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, JR has got, uh, got three things going for him. He's got himself, he's got McCoy Counterfeit, and he's got Autumn Hayes on the outside. Well, McCoy Counterfeit came out here earlier today with uh, the Travis Sharp's jacket threatening to destroy it. Said uh, he, he had a surprise for Travis Sharp. I think Travis thought he was going to wrestle Dredge here again tonight, too. So yeah, I think so, but you know he's got his hands full with this uh, body double, uh, J.R. Carson. You know he is one tough character. He he's, he works out all the time. He's in very good shape and he's a rough and tough character. And now he's tossing Mike Stormwolf, the referee, around. Stormwolf isn't going to be a part of that. Well, that's one guy that I know that's not going to take any guff from anybody is Stormwolf. Now J.R. backs Travis Sharp into the corner. More of those boots, and Travis Sharp 
who's looked pretty good here the last couple months at the main event, maybe in over his head here tonight. Well, I know that, uh, you know, Travis is not afraid of anybody, and this proves it here where he goes up against a man the size of J.R. Carson, and he throws him right into your living room, too, folks, you know. Uh, J.R. is one uh, one tough character, but that uh, Travis Sharp is, uh, is going to get handed his teeth. The other thing when you're looking at this, you got to remember that not only does J.R. have the experience factor, he's got the height and weight advantage, too. Terry's got 40 pounds on Travis Sharp. What, what got, kind of difference was, does that make when you're in the ring? That makes a big, uh, big difference. I'll tell you one thing that he is uh, he's he's a tough uh, he's a tough guy uh, but you like I said you got look at Adam Hayes out there putting the boots to him and Trav uh, and that uh, big blubber uh, whale uh, McCoy counterfat they call him around here I think I think that's what I heard yep well that that's one of the more kind things they say about him anyways I'm not, not, not a popular man with the fans of MIW. I do know that there is a store in town here that is missing all their Twinkies. <laughs> well, JR is taking Travis Sharp apart, and, and that's much to the de de delight of McCoy Counterfeit. All righty, and now, well, Travis is in a world of hurt here. You know, that, that JR could do anything he wants at any time. No, what, wait, what's going on here? McCoy counterfeit right there in front of Stormwall. He's got that banking sheet. Oh, cracks it on the skull. JR has a cover. One, two, three, it's over. Wow, what a victory for Travis Sharp. What an upset. Unbelievable, Travis Sharp. Thanks to the interference of McCoy counterfeit. Oh, and there's a boot to the head, to the gun of McCoy counterfeit. Oh! Look at the dent that baking pan just made on the head of McCoy counterfeit. I'm sure you love that, Terry. Well, I'll tell you, McCoy counterfeit deserves everything he gets in this ring because you know he is uh, he's been a thorn in the side of all these wrestlers, especially the former cruiserweight Robbie Thunder. Now he's uh, he's picking a war with this Travis Sharp, but I'll tell you. Travis is not going to stand still. Maybe there might be one day if I feel up to it, I'll put those two in the ring together and we'll really see how bad he is. Oh, how about JR? Got a second taste of that baking sheet. And McCoy Counterfeit wants nothing to do with that. What a win for Travis Sharp here at the main event for Terry Fox. I'm Capital City Kyle and we'll be right back. the high rollers. It's kind of funny that they aren't here tonight, but I guess I had something to do with that. Yeah. Thank you for that. May I say on behalf of all the wrestlers and fans of MIW. Well, Terry, we got, a, it's kind of a match of debuts. We're going to see Chuck Diesel for the first time. This is also our first chance to see former referee B.J. Van Buren in the ring, and our first chance to see Havoc who I understand hails from Pittsburgh, another one of those many men you've brought in. Well, you know, I've seen tapes of Havoc, and I know Havoc can, uh, can do it. He's gonna, he, he, he told me that he's gonna take care of this diesel. He doesn't need B.J. Van Buren, but he just uh, decided he'd let him come in anyway. Well, I, it didn't look like either of those two guys were in much of a hurry to get in there, and Diesel is fired up. There's the bell, and we're set. I'll tell you, that, uh, that man is really cut. He spends a lot of time in the gym. 
look at the difference between him and BJ B. B. Van Buren. Well, I mean, he is giving up. BJ is about about the size of one arm of this man. BJ, you know, with that whole 185 pounds that he has, giving up 90 pounds. Oh, look at that, Chuck Diesel. You, you, like you said, Chuck Diesel made, made his appearance here at the main event last month, Terry Fox. And let's talk about that a little bit. Because he didn't just come out here and say he wanted a match. He actually came out here and said he could beat not only the Chi-Town Thug, but our, our former champion, Mitch Paradise. Well, you know, this guy thinks he's big and strong and all that. But I'll tell you one thing. When you get a hold of that uh, big rock, Mitch Paradise, you know you got yourself a ride for the night. That shows extreme confidence if you think you're going to walk right in here and beat a man mountain like Mitch Paradise. And now Diesel turns his back to BJ as he's going to pose for the camera. I don't think Chuck there has his mind really on this match. Well, here's our first chance to see see this guy. He's you know he's throwing punches to him. He's uh, whipping him into the corner. Now here comes up a big splash. Oh! And at least, you know, with Havoc here, it's a little bit closer of a match club. They're in the same weight class. Now look at Havoc. He's getting the first real offense for this team. Well, Havoc said he didn't need B.J. Van Buren to wrestle this big man, but it's going to come up. Now, you see, Chuck, he went right down to the little Havoc. And, uh, he, yeah. He, he, he decided he's going to make Havoc to him. <laughs> I guess we can we can count on Chuck Diesel not being a fan favorite. Though the fan here at the main event is quite impressed with this guy. And I gotta admit I am too. Whoa! What a chop! Well, I'll tell you, he has he has really impressed me and how he's working. You know, to see this guy get in the ring and take it to these two kids is uh, impressing. The only thing I'd like to see a little more uh, concentration on his match here. Every time he gets any kind of offense, Terry, he walks over and poses for the camera. And talk about for the camera, here they come right into your house. Oh, there you go, Diesel's in your living room. And all BJ can do is sit there and watch. I don't think BJ even wants to get in there. He's a smart guy. He's going to let this big guy take it off. Oh, look at that. Diesel tells him to go over and make a tank. And look, what a drop kick by BJ. And he stuns Diesel. Chuck Diesel there in the corner now stunned. I don't think that was more than a fly hitting him there, landing on him with that punch. I think he was just more startled about it than, than anything else, you know. He shouldn't be pushing the referee like that. Mike Stormwolf is an accomplished wrestler. And I'll tell you, that guy's got one of the best drop kicks in the business. Well, we like to let things go here at the main event. Those are the rules you dictated, Terry Fox. So Stormwolf's going to give these guys some latitude because we'd like a clean cut finish. Look at that choke slam. Oh, and BJ's got to be out cold. Terry, you can actually see his head bounce off the mat there. Yeah. He, can, know, he can be concussed. And now Havoc's going to get in. I don't know if, I, if I'd have done that. Diesel now, sidewalk slam. Cover, no, he rolls, rolls Havoc over onto BJ. One, two, three. Now is Havoc the winner? No. I'm getting Chuck Diesel. What a debut by Chuck Diesel. Yeah, he pinned both those guys, and he did it in pretty good time, too. It shows you that this man is here for one thing and one thing only. He's to raise, raise Kane in the MIW. He's going to kick butt on anybody and everybody he can. I'm sure we will see more of Chuck Diesel here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. So stay tuned for Terry Fox on Capital City Kyle. Now that the MIW title is on the line, it's up for grabs. Lenny Lane, he's nowhere to be seen. The top two guys in this business, Magnus Maximus and myself, are going for it tonight. 
win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter. You're going to get the beating of a lifetime. You're going to have to have your family come down and identify your body, punk. Well, it's the long-awaited return of the MIW Heavyweight Championship. Two Minnesota wrestling superstars. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the belt had to be vacated. Tim Larson, and we got a match here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars for that belt. I'm Capital City Kyle, and the wrestlers in the ring, as you can see, Tim, on one side, in the black and red, it's Magnus Maximus from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and on the other side, in the black and green, hailing from Chicago, Illinois, it's the Chi-Town Thug. When they talk about heavyweights, we have two of the best heavyweights right here in MIW, Chi-Town Thug, Thug, and Magnus Maximus, and we're off. There's the bell, and we are set. You said it. This is going to be a couple of behemoths colliding. And uh, we, this is going to be quite a matchup. We've seen these two there before. Magnus Maximus making his return to MIW after a while off. Oh, and there's a big kick. Well, of course. Oh, and another one. And another one. Another left. He keeps nailing Chai Town Thug with those lefts. And I don't think that was the response he expected. Many people here in the Minnesota area, of course, have seen our friend Magnus Maximus there, who just got a heck of a chop when he teamed up with Scotty Zappa to take on Brock Lesnar and Sheldon Benjamin, the Minnesota wrestler. What a clothesline there, too. Chi-Town no slouch either, though, of course. Chi-Town thug recently with a big victory over Mitch Paradise last month at the main event. Hey, Chi-Town Thug is no slouch. Look at him, just putting a boot to Magnus Maximus. Man, what a, what a couple of giants in the wrestling business. Maximus is in trouble here. Look at that power slam by Chi-Town. Cover, two count, not enough to keep him down. Holy cow, he took him over with great force, Kyle. This title, this match, like I said, is for that coveted MIW Heavyweight Championship. The top two contenders being put in there, Tim. And there's lots of guys aiming for these two. I mean, this is just, I mean, you win the belt tonight, and, and you've got a long road ahead of you. You have guys like Mitch Paradise. You have guys like um, Robbie Thunder. Absolutely. You have guys Travis like Travis Sharp, Boris the Psychopath. Boris the Psychopath. You know, there's, there's lots of top, top, top contenders in the MIW. And these guys, whoever wins the title tonight, is going to have a tough road to hold. Well, not only do we have top contenders here in MIW, Tim Larson, but you and I both well know that our commissioner here in MIW, Terry Fox, is always bringing in new people for the champions to face. Well, tough guys. I mean, we saw we saw JR the Punisher in MIW. We've seen this new guy, Chuck Diesel. And, and we've... Now, a big arm ringer there by Chi-Town Thug. Chuck Diesel, we've seen loud and pain. We've seen all the top names here in the Midwest. Ooh, a thumb to the eye right there. Big thumb. Chi-Town now in trouble. Maximus, big, or looks like a choke from here. Now, Tim, you know, we all know that Magnus Maximus has had a good look at by the WWF in the last few months. Well, we all saw the match. Oh, where he fought Raven. Uh, on Jack, we, we saw we saw Brian him in the tag team you mentioned. Oh, the tag team match with Brock Lesnar. Whoa, and a singles match with Brock Lesnar the next night. I understand from what I've read on the internet that the Brock Lesnar was very impressed when when he had a chance to face Magnus there. Whoa, but Shy Town Thug isn't so impressed by Magnus Maximus. Look at him put the boots to him. Very much so. Shy Town really fired up both of these guys looking for gold here in MIW. Now choking out. Shy Town Thug might be a fan favorite, but he's he's not, he's not a wimp. He's gonna take every shortcut he can. He's gonna bully you around. He's gonna try to suplex you right out of your boots. Oh! Speaking of boots, there's a big one to the face of Maxis, Magnus Maximus now. Maximus with the big next neck breaker. It's good. One, two. Oh, I thought that could be it right there for the Shy Town Thug. Now, M Maximus giving uh, giving referee Mike Stormwolf a little piece of his mind and choking out the Shy Town Thug at the same time. I'm surprised that uh, Stormwolf hasn't broken this up sooner. Come on, Stormwolf, break that up. Jeez, trying to take the wind out of the Chi-Town thug, thug, thug right there. Holy cow, I'm excited, Kyle. Picks him up by the hair there. 
whips him across. I, Tim, I think everybody here in the main event is as excited as you are. This is head on. One, two. We I already like saw the Cruiserweight title man defended here earlier tonight. We'll have the, the TV title next month. Lots of gold here in MIW and lots of battles for it. I'm sorry, Tim. Well, Magnus Maximus right there. Looks like he's complaining. Looks like he wants to order some food now. Well, uh, yeah, kids sit in a menu and, and Magnus Maximus is, well, he's trying to take a night off here? Well, I think that's a big mistake, Tim. You and I both know they got great food here at the main event, but uh, you might want to concentrate on your opponent. Shy town thug, like you said, he's no slouch. Looks and like the fans have distracted uh, Magnus Maximus. Really, um, you need to keep your you need to keep your head on the match. You know that, Kyle, and I know that too. You're right. You can't take your mind off of a guy like the shy town thug for even a moment. And now, Marcus, Magnus Maximus trying to put all his weight down there on the thug to keep him on the map, but thug is up. Oh, and he gets a big elbow, and another big elbow, and he's finally free. Ducks under the clothesline. Oh, Magnus tries to pick him up, but chi -Town gets behind him, picks him up. Oh, people, what a suplex. I haven't, I, he almost tossed him halfway across the ring. Probably would have tossed him out of the ring there. Oh, Magnus Maximus gets the foot on the rope. One, two, and how about chi -Town Thug just hooked the leg? Very good uh, experience there by Chi Town Thug. Holy cow, we've got hard hitting action here in MIW and Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. Look at the pull of the hair there by Magnus Maximus. You're right, Tim, this is the kind of stuff you'll see every week when you tune into Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. Cover one, two. I think Max Maximus is still trying to shake the cobwebs out of his head from that big suplex. That could be what it is. Now, it seems that uh, you're right about Max, Magnus Maximus having a problem with the crowd. They continue to distract him. Shy town ducks the big clothesline, ducks the second clothesline. Oh, but the flying clothesline got him there, Tim. But gets his foot on the rope. Good ring presence by the Shy town thug now. Absolutely, Kyle. This is a big match. Both these guys know what this means. It, to carry the MIW strap is big in the state of Minnesota. Now, big sidewalk slam, one, two. And we've seen Magnus Maximus pick chi -Town Thug up by the hair a couple of times here. Obviously, both guys doing whatever it takes to take home that big, coveted heavyweight title. Big four. One, two. Still not enough to keep the chi -Town Thug down. Now, chi -Town has a little bit of a weight advantage. I'm surprised that uh, uh, someone with the experience of Magnus Maximus didn't hook the leg. I, uh, I would think he would too. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he's probably still shaking the cobwebs out of that big suplex. I, I think right now he's trying to control him, do the ground and pound, regain his senses maybe, and, and, um, and, and wear down the chi -Town thug in, in the, in the uh, meantime. Referee Mike Stormwolf in there making sure it's not a choke. Now Magnus Maximus back up. Picks up the Chi Town Thug. What's it gonna be? Oh! What a chop! And now what? Look at that! Chi Town holds out of the arm and a spine buster by the Chi Town Thug! Big move! Holy cow, that, that could turn the tide, but both men are down. Both guys in trouble now. This could come simply down to whoever gets to their feet first as referee Mike Stormwolf gives them the mandatory 10 count. Which guy will get to their feet first? Tim Larson, it's a battle of wills at this point. Well, both these guys have been going out 100% since the opening bell rang. What a great heavyweight matchup we've got here. And now both guys trading punches. Shy Town with a couple big blocks there is able to get an advantage on Mark Magnus Maximus. Huge blow knocks him right, right in the chest, knocks him straight down the canvas. Shy Town thug up in the second row. What a drop kick! I've never seen that from the Shy Town thug. He knows this one, two, three. Oh! I thought that was it. I thought this drop kick would be enough. I agree with you on that one, Tim. I think the fans thought pretty much the same thing as now the Chi Town Thug gets a gets a thumb to the throat. I think that was Maximus right over in the corner, right on the Thug now. 
What a great matchup. And now, looks like we might see a superplex here, Tim. Boy, with the height of Magnus Maximus and the low ceiling here, this, this might not be a good idea. Oh, no, these, these are two huge guys to be on the top row. I don't know if oh see how God. close they are to that fan right there, but if Magnus stood up, he might take off his head. Oh, no. This is not safe. Whoa! chi -Town pushes Magnus Maximus back onto the mat. Now trying to, both guys trying to shake off the cobwebs. It looks like chi has got it. Oh, he almost had the double axe handle. Great block by Magnus Maximus. That's it, that's his finisher, Tim. He's done. Magnus, all he's gotta do is cover him. He he's gets so over. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. Oh, wow, Tim Larson. Somehow, some way, Chi Town Thug got that shoulder up. The little extra effort at the end. I cannot believe it. Unbelievable. Chi Town Thug not willing to give it up. Neither man, will, both giving it their all. Neither guy will give up. And now, Chi Town gets behind him again. Oh, no. Magnus Maximus. No, Chi Town again. Oh, wow. One. German suplex wins it! Holds it! Oh, no. Huge win for the Chi Town Thug! What a win! The new champions, the Chi Town Thug! We have a new MIW heavyweight champion! Your winner of this bout, and new MIW heavyweight champion of the world, the Chi Town the Chi-Town Thug, the new MIW Heavyweight Champion. We'll see more of him in the weeks to come here on Minnesota Wrestling Superstars. For Tim Larson, I'm Capital City Kyle. Stick around.